trends. A show about what's new, what's hot in media, technology, fashion, and business. It is a flashlight on the sometimes hard trail to market success. Trends is a show for and about tastemakers. The world relies on trends to find new paths to innovation, to ingenuity, and to success. Welcome to Trends. My name is Adnita and I'm here with my special guest, Liz LaManche, who's an artist from Somerville, Massachusetts. How are you today? Great. How are you, Anita? Good. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we can start and I wanted to know, where did you grow up? Uh, I went to school in Connecticut, but before that I was an Air Force brat, so we went all over the world. I lived mostly in Turkey and Germany. Okay, and how was it growing up there? Uh, it was pretty formative. I got to have a sense that there was a big, beautiful world out there and a lot of different ways of living. Um, so that kind of informed my understanding of like, different people and being able to get along with everyone. And it, by the time we settled in Connecticut, like I felt like I knew more than a lot of the kids there who had yeah. only been in one place. That's awesome. And did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? Uh, I always knew it was a thing I needed to do. Like ever since I was small, I was always drawing and yeah. <laughs> painting and making stuff. So what inspires some of your pieces? Uh, some of it is just play and the physical sense of playing with color and shape. And some of it is wanting to like serve a community or say something yeah. wonderful in the world. Because I saw um, on a YouTube video that you did that you did some work in Salem and I think it was 2015? Um, yeah, it was a couple summers yeah. ago. Uh, what, in, what inspired some of those pieces? Uh, Salem was a um, companion project to the original uh, duck tattoo project that I did in East Boston, which was doing tattoo designs mm -hmm. of the different cultures that we've been connected to by sea in our sailing history in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and then once that was done and people started to see it and like it, I got a call that they were looking for um, proposals for public garden in Salem. Mm -hmm. They wanted something in the center of town that would yeah. kind of knit the different blocks together. Okay. Um, so I made a Salem flavored version of that because they had slightly different shipping and sailing history and they communicated with different parts of the world. Yeah, so it kind of brought everything kind of together so people could see mm -hmm. um, how Salem has all these different aspects because they think Salem is only all the witch child but there's actually right. more parts to it. So that's really cool that you were able to do that. Um, and you also got to be advised by Kent, I believe? Kent uh, Bloomer, yeah. Bloomer. How was that? It was a wonderful time. Uh, he's an ornamentalist, yeah. which means studying the history of ornament in architecture and art history in the built environment and believes, like I do, that we enjoy living in a more decorated world. Yeah. Because um, I think people feel special when they have a painting or some kind of decoration surfaces around them have been loved. Yeah. Which is why we like street art so much, rather than having a blank wall. Yeah, and we I could have a work of art. Sorry. I see too that you do some paintings of your friends and some artwork of your friends. Mm -hmm. um, and right behind us, we have one. I believe I think it's one of your friends. Yeah, um, uh, this year is my friend Masha. Um, she's just a someone I know in the Burning Man and local arts community. Um, and she has this great little winsome smile that I just wanted to capture. Um, so this is done off of a picture that I took of her when we were in uh, Cambridge Brewing Company. Ooh. Only she's also got this like cute little sense of humor. Yeah. So I did her as an Andorian dreaming of avocados. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And then the next one beside? This is my friend Katie, who's a fire spinner. Um, also in the Burning Man arts community. And she took this as a, I copied this off a um, Facebook selfie yeah. that she took when, one morning at Burning Man when she was very happy. 
So I just wanted to capture that. I made her eyes like bigger and the whole yeah, thing more colorful. Eyes. You definitely captured the color. Um, mm -hmm. So you mentioned Burning Man. Mm -hmm. What what is that? It's an arts festival in the Nevada desert late in August, mm -hmm. and it's people bring whatever art or performance that they like the most, and it's um, all free, not um, no money is exchanged. Mm -hmm. um, so people gift or give away things yeah. and bring like big fire art or do performances or make sculpture. Or That's pretty cool. So are you bringing like. any of your pieces to that? Yeah, this year I'm working <laughs> on a 17 foot tall tower, which is the structure is being brought by some, some friends and I'm going to skin it with colorful paintings and we're going to light it with color changing LED lights. That's amazing. So how do you prepare for something like that? Like mm -hmm. such a big project like that, how do you prepare for it? A lot of the time I get into big projects because I'm too stupid to know my limitations. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, oh, that's no problem, I can do that. <laughs> and then eventually you muddle through and realize that you can do that in some form or another or you get help or... <laughs> yeah. It's always good to overcome something that you, what I'm, like you think is an obstacle, but once you achieve it mm -hmm. and you know you did a great job, you feel that sense of pride mm -hmm. inside. So yeah. it, it's good that you're, you're going to do, mm -hmm. people get to see what you're working on too, which is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I like to say, take on the kind of project that will turn you into the person who can do that project. Yeah. <laughs> So have you done any like big projects like in the state um, of Massachusetts? Uh, I think the biggest one is uh, three years ago I did the, the Doc Tattoo project in East Boston, which is a thousand foot long installation on a um, industrial cement pier wow. in a shipyard. Yeah. Um, and it's 19 different designs of different cultures that we were connected to by sea mm -hmm. and around that time was sort of when the race debate was heating up in Boston yeah. and I wanted to make a more inclusive multicultural story because a lot of our tourist history in Boston is like Paul Revere and all the... Yeah. So when you're working on these pieces, do you, could you imagine them and how do you put the colors together and know what textures you want? to use or patterns or do you want it to be traditional? How do you mm -hmm. pick? <laughs> a lot of it is a response to the individual project or place or what I'm trying to say. Um, the one in East Boston is all black and white or black on cement yeah. because frankly it was just too big a project to manage a whole color palette in yeah. this specific dye I was using. Um, and also because that would tie everything together okay. thematically. So, so what kind of cultures did you include in that piece? Um, whatever one seemed the most meaningful in terms of our history and our connections okay. as a city. Like we started out as an international trade port and in the 16, 17, 1800s there were, like, we had the big trade with Asia for ceramics and oh, textiles, and that was a main driver of yeah. things. We went to India for tea. We had, sadly, the triangle trade and Africa and slavery. And I have a whole website that like, explains the background of all these yeah. things, too. And the cultures that I was less familiar with, um, graphic design, art history-wise, I found artists from that background and hired them with my funding money to develop something that they felt was saying the right thing yeah. in terms of this project. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and what, what advice would you give people who want to be an artist? Um, if you have something to say, say it, because other people will probably be glad that you did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there are so many things in this world that try to sidetrack you and get you just to not do your art. 
Yeah. But you have to set aside time and make it happen no matter what. Yeah, you kind of have to follow your dreams so you can feel some happiness and fulfillment at the end of the day. Because like you said earlier, you only live once mm -hmm. and you only have one life to live. So might as well do something that makes you happy. Right. <laughs> uh, so I'm also talking about moving to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Did you, what, what inspired you or made you want to think about making that leap there? Well, a bunch of my friends have, so we have sort of a bi-coastal society friends group anyway, and I've visited there a bunch and done some projects there now. Oh, really? Um, but I still have a beautiful tribe here, yeah. and I'm very embedded in this like area as well, okay. so it's, it's a hard... To work a lot I'd like to just travel more and have a foot in both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you kind of like to work with the community. Mm -hmm. So we'll be right back. We're going to take a short break. Today we're talking to people about learning and attention issues like ADHD and dyslexia. October is Learning Disabilities, Dyslexia, and ADHD Awareness Month. We're inviting people to learn more about these invisible issues. So we built simulations so you can actually experience what it's like to be one of the one in five with learning and attention issues. I gotta go back. I don't know how to do this at all. Time's up. I'm gonna get this wrong. Something which you think is easy and it wasn't. I think I'm a pretty smart person, but it was really hard for me. One in five people have learning and attention issues. Learning and attention issues are common and real. I had no idea. I was shocked. Everyone's brains are different. I have a no bound empathy for those who are misunderstood. I think everybody deserves to be understood. We all want to be understood. Be understood. Be understood. Welcome back. Liz and I were actually just talking about her work in Salem, and I wanted to ask you which one was your most inspiring one? Uh, the one that I got the most out of emotionally, um, there was something that I connected to about all of them, but the fact that we got to put a 20-foot giant um, Sankofa symbol at the front steps of the Old Town Hall, and that means uh, learn from the past. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, Salem Public Arts Commissioner was really into it and everyone reacted really well to it. That's great. So which one was your favorite one? Uh, I love being able to do that and seeing it there and I also enjoyed this sort of tongue-in-cheek um, uh, Sailor Jerry Mermaid that we did in full color up at the top of the walkway because cool. a lot of people like, got a little fun out of that. Yeah, so now do you get any creative blocks ever? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get out of them? Ah, oh, different ways. I think everybody who works creatively is occasionally convinced that they have absolutely nothing to say, no talents, everyone else is better. Yeah. Um, and you just have to start with where you're at and not compare yourself to others, but just sort of do some kind of arts. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the best thing ever, but just keep at it and start where you're at and keep trying to get better. So what's your favorite um, way to let your creativeness out? Do you like doing patterns or traditional? What's your favorite? It depends on the mood. I like a lot <laughs> of different things. Um, sometimes I, I really love playing with images of my friends. Yeah. And, what, what makes me happy about their personalities and other times I like doing like super geeky research into like history of pattern and ornament and shape and like, designing these intricate pattern things mm -hmm. and sometimes I like playing with just saturated color. Like, put a really bright blue next to a really bright orange yeah. <laughs> and just look at it and that makes my brain happy. Yeah, no, because we were talking earlier about one of the pieces that you actually did about your friends, and um, you said you were learning how to work with the golden leaf? Gold leaf, yeah. Gold leaf. Yeah, so what, it, what exactly is gold leaf? Uh, that's where you have micro-thin sheets of actual gold, or you can buy fake stuff too, and it's uh, very light and wispy, and you put a layer of glue down on whatever you're doing. Glue the metal mm. down, and then 
and just burnish it so it's, yeah. it's all stuck down and smooth. Oh, That's cool. sort of a historical technique. Okay. It's fun to play with. Yeah. <laughs> Playing with materials can be a lot of fun too. What kind of other materials have you worked with? Uh, I've built things out of wood. Um, I've done some metal work. Um, Did most... you also work on the piano you said that there was in Boston? Oh, right. How was that? The Boston Street Piano. Yeah. I was in that program last fall. Um, and that was a lot of fun. They give you a random piano. And I have the uh, the bench for it still here. <laughs> uh, the one I got was really low and kind of small and yeah. sort of this light gold blonde wood and it was sort of art deco with uh, smooth curves. Yeah. So I responded to that. It was hard to have an idea ahead of time yeah. and apply it to this thing because you could get a big square thing or you could get a little round thing. Yeah. Um, so I decided that it needed more vertical space to have more presence on the street. So mm -hmm. I built a wood back for it and wow. painted on that and, uh, and on the piano. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you also have, I think I saw on your Twitter, you have a class going on or did have a class? Uh, I did a little video course on how to paint a mural. Cool. And how many, were there a lot of people that signed up? I think I have almost a hundred sign-ups. Wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> now, are you I thinking that you want to do it again or anytime soon, but doing something um, different or an another subject? Yeah, um, there's uh, these online courses. I've really enjoyed taking them and you can learn a lot from it. Um, so I wanted to try my hand at putting something together because people often ask me to how you do that. Yeah. So I figured it would help others. Nice. Now, my other question was going to be, when, well, who are your, your heroes? Or, because I saw that you say that people should, you celebrate people who are themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so who, who do you celebrate? <laughs> um, a lot of my friends and the, like, individuals who are being themselves and putting themselves out there. They don't have have to be famous people. Yeah. Um, but just folks who are like moral and friendly and wonderful in their daily lives. Like um, I don't know if you saw the um, series of old cars staircase, but that was a memorial that I did for my old um, auto mechanic, oh. who was fixed our cars in Somerville for many, many years. I think he was probably in business for 50 years or something. Wow. And he started out just fixing cars for friends and yeah. then it turned into business. But he was always welcoming and would connect people to each other and people who got their car fixed there would give each other rides home. And no, he amazing. was just quietly nice. Yeah. And you could trust him. And that's he made a nice place. So how else do you involve yourself with the community? Uh, I just did this fun project in Somerville, which was uh, with the Somerville Neighborways group, and they're taking streets and intersections where it's very dense and the traffic is going a little too fast, and they're doing sort of DIY traffic calming. Oh. So we made a virtual rotary in the middle of this big intersection. Oh wow! And painted like a faux garden, yeah, like flowers and different places. That's pretty cool. To like slow the traffic, make people happy that there was color and flowers there because it's a fairly dense neighborhood. Yeah, and it'll help them mm -hmm. slow them down a little bit too because they're gonna yeah. be looking at the colors and the patterns. So it'll help with the with the traffic too, so, so they won't go too right. fast. <laughs> and also trying to train the traffic to go in a different pattern so yeah. that they can eventually get a rotary there. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. Sort of DIY urbanism. <laughs> so is there anything that you have dreamed of doing that you really one day want to work on that you haven't yet? Mm, I want to create more beautiful things in the world. And I think that cities should be something that we can personalize and mm -hmm. make more human. 
because it's I don't think it's good for people to live in like bare concrete yeah as on a not human scale so if we can make our cities more livable and pleasant then everyone will be in a better mood and it will make the world a better place yes yeah, so do you feel like the state of Massachusetts is accepting of art or do you wish they were more accepting of it it's come a long way in the last few years but we're still a little bit behind the curve um, it's been exciting to see it get better and more acceptance like there's just been a giant uh, mural street art thing in Lynn yeah I saw that yeah that wouldn't have happened a few years ago it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're, they're making it more cultural because a lot of the paintings mm -hmm. that or the murals that I was seeing um, had Hispanic, but they were they were they were still working on it. So it was hard for me to tell what it was. Mm. But I was like, that's so cool that they're incorporating art in some way um, in the different communities in Massachusetts. Mm. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, color things up and make it more fun and let people express themselves. Yeah, I really love some of the other cities that do that so well, like Montreal and San Francisco. And places in Europe and South yeah. America. So how else do you say you, you express yourself? Do you only express yourself through your art or do you have many other ways? Mm, I used to do a bunch of circus and aerial dance. I'm not performing mm -hmm. these days because of shoulder injuries, but I still like to keep in practice and that's a wonderful way to move. Yeah. Is Do you know, do you think they'll ever, um, if they ever did like a circus school if you would be interested in doing or teaching or doing something like that not actually exercising because of your shoulder mm -hmm. but actually like instructing uh i did some of that in the past oh. um and my husband still teaches uh aerial silk in littleton mass and i know the people that started esh circus arts in uh, somerville Okay. So it's a good culture. We have pretty good <laughs> circus going on here. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't, I didn't know that existed, and I actually went on your Twitter and saw that they were doing um, the circus school, um, mm. and I was like, that's pretty. So fun. Yeah, I was like, that's so fun and pretty cool that people have all these different ways of expressing themselves, and that's kind. Of, you do that mm. through your art and using the different colors. Mm. Um, so have you ever done like? with your paint of your family or done portraits of them and hmm, not really um they're fairly quiet folks and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it just hasn't happened yet maybe mm -hmm. in the future yeah hopefully mm -hmm. uh and you said you wanted to travel as well mm -hmm. where do you see yourself or where do you want to travel more often um, I'd like to spend more time on the West Coast. I haven't even been to Berlin yet, so mm -hmm. that's definitely on the list. And I've been uh, hoping to get to places like Buenos Aires, that yeah. have beautiful street art too. Okay, cool. There's so much to see in the world. Yeah, I just went to, to Thailand with my friends and I didn't get mm. to see too much art. Um, so I'm like thinking, I'm like maybe if there was more art in I was started off in Bangkok and I didn't see any hmm. and I was like maybe people they they should allow more people to express themselves because I know they have martial hmm. law going on there now so people don't have that opportunity hmm. uh, so maybe I'm thinking something like that would work as well where you can travel hmm. and be able to do more art in places like that where hmm. there's not many of it um, have you were, ever worked with, with kids? Uh, a little bit. Um, there were, um, we're just talking about a program in Lowell where we might be able to take uh, kids from a summer art program and have them do a mural. Oh, that would be fun. That's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how often do you say you would keep yourself my, what I'm trying to ask is like do you do like work anything else or do anything else other than art mm -hmm. or like you I think you mentioned you were mm -hmm. doing some graphic design and web designing yeah how often do you get to do that uh, look I'm in a very fortunate position because I've spent a career doing 
uh, software user interface and uh, corporate graphic design. So I can now like turn down the dial on the graphic art and yeah. turn up the dial on the public art, uh, which is speaking to me more lately. Um, but it's also a f like it uses both halves of my brain at the same time, so I really yeah. enjoy <laughs> the computer art and the graphic design. I can go back to those. I have ongoing clients, and I still do jobs of that kind. Okay. And you have a, a lot of beautiful art in your home. Which one was your your favorite one to work on, or which one do you like most? <laughs> um, that's hard to say. <laughs> They're all my babies. <laughs> I know. And they're, they're very, very beautiful. Let's see. This is one that hasn't gotten explained mm -hmm. yet. And this is my, my good friend Kong. And he just looks like such an anime character that I yeah. have to do a new <laughs> style. It's a different style from all the others. Okay. But, like, okay, you're an anime character. And this is actually from a pencil drawing hmm. of a photograph. And then I took the pencil drawing back into the computer and computerized it again to get the anime style. It's really pretty. And what is by like the, um, the color in his hair in the background? Uh, he's sort of a goth, so the mm. dark colors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what about this one behind me? That's one of the newest ones. This is um, Ehawk, uh, Ilana Rivera, who's the um, accordion player for Emperor Norton's Stationary Marching Band. They're a honk band here in Davis Square. Um, and she is also an artist. And she likes to draw these like squids and octopus and things. <laughs> She's got these beautiful twists in her hair, so I was just playing with the two of those things, the things that make her unique and wonderful. Yeah, and I like the, the wink and the little smirk <laughs> that she has going on. It definitely shows mm -hmm. her personality. Um, and the band plays at the um, like steampunk festivals and has a sort of historical aesthetic. Okay, so we're going to take another short break. We'll be right back. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Welcome back, and we were just talking about this piece right behind me. So tell me more about this piece. This is my friend Ehawk, uh, Alana Rivera. She's the accordion player for Emperor Norton Stationary Marching Band. That's a honk brass band in Davis Square. Um, and what I liked about her is she's always got a very expressive look. She's okay. really cute and she's, um, she's an artist as well. She d likes to do these squids and octopus kind of things, yeah. and she's got these beautiful little twists in her hair a lot of the time, so I was just playing off the two of those. And what inspired the, the coloring in this piece? Um, the band sometimes has a sepia, steampunk kind of <laughs> aesthetic, and I just love the complementary contrast of the purple and the ochre here. Okay. They make each other look brighter. Cool. And how long did this piece take you to make? Uh, it was about a day. Okay. Have you? What was the longest piece that you've worked on so far? About a year. <laughs> Which well, that was that the pier. The pier? <laughs> wow. From the test piece that I did one fall to all the um, research and planning to actually putting it in the next summer. Oh, wow. So that yeah. took about a year to plan. Yeah. To get everything. So with that, how do you prepare for something like that? Uh, the public pieces are often a lot of talking to people and making sure that we have agreement and we have all our ducks in a row and budgeting and all okay. that stuff. Cool. And then that's why I like small ones too because I can just like noodle with my little 
stuff and not have to do that much planning. So did you create <laughs> any of the little ones? Um, these are all from photos of the pier designs. Oh. Um, while they were going in, I really liked like, little sections of the pattern and I would make these little photographic snaps. Yeah. And then when I got back to the studio, I would play with them on the computer and try to make them into other things. It's beautiful. I was meaning to ask where they were from, but it, mm -hmm. I like the, you have the backstory to your art, which yeah. is amazing. And then I did some other drawing on top of them and put these uh, copper sides on and floated a layer of epoxy, so oh, it's nice wow. object again. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, would you ever want to work on such a, a, a big piece like this again? Oh yeah, because yeah. you're doing the tower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and also it gets something out into the world and yeah. it becomes part of the cultural dialogue and that can be a powerful thing. Well, thank you for having me today. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure meeting you and being able to interview you. Uh, so until yeah. next time, thank you. <laughs>